It's Thanksgiving today and what better way to spend Thanksgiving than to do a rundown of Justin's bike that we're using currently to ride across the USA. We promised we'd do this about three weeks ago, so sorry it's so late. We just needed a rest day. So this is a Carbide Madeline CA monocoque carbon hand cycle. Madeline Carbide, not Carbide Madeline. No, I'm not going to tell you because no one should buy this bike. It's a terrible bike. Do you really think so? Yes. Go on, give us a rundown of the bike and then give us your opinion. It was a very good bike six years ago. This is a, a Madeline Carbide racing hand bike. So the frame itself is made of carbon fiber. The fork is made from aluminium. Uh, foot plates are made from aluminium and the drafting bar at the back is also made from aluminium. This is purely for racing. This bike would not really be used for, for anything else. Definitely not for bike touring. That's, that's not advisable. Why? Well, for a start, Francis, this is a very old bike, which has had <laughs> a lot of damage to it over the years. Uh, and hand bikes are very difficult to replace. They took a long time to make. They're bespoke for every user. Um, ideally, well, what I was going to have made for this trip was an aluminium handbike, which was going to be more durable, we would have been able to carry more stuff, uh, would have also had the same size wheels as on your bike, so we could have had the same parts, same spares, would have made everything much easier if we had any punctures or anything like that, because handbikes have 650c size wheels, uh, which means that my road clearance is also much lower. This is only meant to be built for speed, nothing else. It's pretty quick though, you're super low down. Yep, So low good. down, you scrape the floor. Yes. From here, maybe don't focus too much on the holes underneath it. Luckily, all of this was reinforced before we came out, which is lucky because, yeah, that's not so good. This damage is just from the trip that we've just done. So yeah. three weeks worth of riding. And that's, we haven't even gone over a speed bump. That's how inappropriate these things are for going around a city. So why do you have smaller wheels? Uh, standard size for a handbike is going to be 650c, although for all modern handbikes, uh, all racing setups will have 20 inch wheels on the back uh, because then you've got a shorter wheelbase and you'll have a much better turning circle, which as you've discovered is one of the downfalls of a handbike. The turning is almost non-existent. How do you turn? Like that. Even worse when you have a trailer on the back. Yes, people would have noticed when we do get stuck somewhere, you have to come to the front and lift me up by the front wheel to try and pull me around. So there's a pivot point here. Here. And there's kind of like elastic or something going on that kind of centers it into the middle. Yeah, that also broke recently. It completely broke, so the whole thing was over like that, which got made getting in and out of it very difficult. Thank you very much to Chris Madden from Draft Wheelchairs for fixing all of this. You're a legend, Chris. On to components. This is basically a normal bicycle drivetrain upside down. Yes, uh, chain and a half in length, originally had DI2 uh, shifting system on it, but then coming out onto this trip, we put on the same uh, SRAM setup that you have, which was a mistake because on most bikes, you have a hanger that can be replaced. On this bike, this really terribly designed bike, it has an integrated hanger here. So none of these gears actually fit properly. Yay. So for the whole trip, <laughs> If I try and find a gear, I shift down two and then go back up one and then trim them to try and make it work. <laughs> this bike has caused me nothing but problems. It has broken multiple times. And the problem is, they're so damn expensive, you can't change them. Wait there. So as demonstrated oh, shit. by Francis, uh, you're holding both of the handles upside down. How do you brake? How do you brake? That big thing sticking out at the front. Hey. How do you reverse? With your hands on the ground. <laughs> you really can't see much from down here. No, but you can see yourself in the little mirror there which is difficult for people to see. Oh, there's a tiny mirror there, which allows you to see. Cool. <laughs> you can see if you don't wear a helmet. So normally when I ride, I don't often have a helmet on because then I can see the road behind me. Safety first. I feel so vulnerable. Your legs really <laughs> stop the steering from working. Tires. Gator skin Continentals. Uh, went for the most durable tires that I could find for this trip. It's difficult because there are not many tires which are available in this size, but these have worked really well. But I don't have these as the spares. We've got Schwalbe ones as the spares because those are the folding options to save on space. And the tire, when you consider all of the weight is on the front, it's looking pretty good actually. We've only got punches on the front, haven't we? Yeah. And both times, admittedly, pinch punches. Yeah. So they've been pretty good. Uh, they're also really easy to take on and off these rims, which I like. The cassette is a... 1050. Is it 1050? Yeah. The cassette is a 1050. Did have a 1052, it didn't fit. And even this one on the smallest gear, you can see here, there's a little bit of helicopter tape. 
because the chain on the small, on the big ring, doesn't actually fit. So it hits along there and we put that on there to protect it. The front is a 46, which is for the number of teeth it has. And it is too big. It is not suitable for bike touring, or towing a wheelchair, or towing a trailer, or climbing. Should we show the viewers how we've been putting the trailer on? Yes. The following method should not be used under any circumstances. If you're watching this, don't do this. This is only possible because when I knew that I was gonna have the chair on the back of the bike, I had all of this reinforced. So this drafting bar is normally only used when you're racing. Stop other hand cyclists from hitting the back of your bike or the back of your wheels. It is not designed to carry a wheelchair or a trailer. But when we knew we had to carry the trailer, we had to MacGyver the shit out of this situation. So here we have a stolen towel underneath a load of duct tape. And on top of that duct tape is a through axle from the Burley Coho XC. And we duct taped that on to try and maintain the easy system that Burley has created to take the trailer on and off a bike. I mean, it's super like, stays on. I don't really know why we're showing people this because we're about to change trailer and put it on my bike instead. But yes. this is how we've been riding for the last seven days. And it hasn't fallen off, so that's good. So what other little bits have you got on your bike that you need to have easy access to while you're riding? I can see a jacket yes. and a bag and a camelback well, thing. We haven't talked about the most important safety feature. What's that? Flag. Oh. Removable for ease of use into getting into a lift. And also if a dog comes near you, can reach behind you, grab it. It also comes with a single bottle holder, perfect for long distance. Camelback from a cheaper company, not included, strapped on. And we've put some tyres, the folding ones, underneath here, strapped on with the tail fin straps. Lightweight rain jacket, thank you very much Berghaus. A light, thank you very much Garmin. That's actually a really well designed piece of kit, unlike the rest of the spike. This is a very powerful light, also good for safety. Sometimes people think that they're saying, why does your head not get tired? This is supporting all of my head and my neck. It's incredibly comfortable. That's one thing they made right. It's a very comfortable bike. So this brake cable here, this was put on just before we came out on the trip because when the bike that was meant to be coming out for this trip wasn't going to be made in time, we tried to replace as much as possible to make sure as little as possible would go wrong. And so this was replaced with a reinforced brake cable and that's the thing that has been rubbing against me. It's, uh, it's not as bad as people think. It just, you know, cuts you open and makes you bleed a bit. There's also uh, a seatbelt here for safety, um, but only in the way that you have a seatbelt for safety on an aeroplane. It's mainly just to keep you attached to the equipment when they're rescuing your body. I feel like I should be more positive about this. <laughs> People want to know the truth, and you gave them the truth, Justin. Should we go and find someone to do the one chip challenge? Yes. I think I have an idea who it could be. <laughs> oh my. Maybe not the whole chip. We have to see. I mean, it's already crushed up, and we talked about snorting part of it anyway. So Scorpion, if you want to do that, that, that part, chill, that's snorting it was a joke. Everyone. Be an the eyeball, or like... One of the kids just said, "It's my dad going to go to hospital." <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? I laughed. Oh, she's coming out. <laughs> my mom's coming out. I'm dead now. Oh, hi, mom. <laughs> no, no, no. See what it looks like? No. One chip challenge. I really actually do feel nervous. This is crazy. Oh, oh it's so scary. <laughs> didn't touch my tongue. And I really don't want to touch my tongue. Oh. And for real. Mm, I am. Oh my god. Is this spicy? Is this spicy? That's kind of cool. It's very hot. I think I'm starting to feel a little drool coming up. Now it's getting really hot. <laughs> That's just really, really hot. <laughs> <laughs> it does burn really good. I don't encourage anyone to do this, and people who I came up with this idea are straight evil. <laughs> don't try this at home. Get Kids Going is where you need to uh, donate, and that's the only reason that I was doing this. Check the link down below.